Okay, for, so this demo is about iterated pattern. You can go to uh, the lectures page and download this particular starter code and compile that. It should be compilable right away. And that guy there corresponds to basically what we set in the lecture on uh, Wednesday. Okay, let me remind you quickly what the issue was. And then we're going to gradually build the iterator pattern. Okay? If you recall from Wednesday, we have this particular supplier which is using array. And then you can see for the feature, it's ex uh, exported to any, so it's public. And then we have this particular client over here. They're using the feature specific to the array. So that could be an issue, right? So let me show you what the issue is. And then we'll see why iterator pattern could be useful. So what I would do is like this. What I would do is I'm going to change this from array into linked list. And then you will see that, of course, we have to make some changes accordingly in the supplier. That one is expected. However, you will see that the client's code will also stop to compile. That's the issue, right? You shouldn't really uh, have that for your uh, application. So now let me just go to Eiffel Studio here. Okay, so that's uh, the starter code. And then if you go to uh, the model, okay, under the model cluster, go to uh, cart. Uh, sorry, go to shop over here. Okay, if you go to shop, you can see I got some code over here already for you. So now if you try to see uh, exactly this particular attribute here. Oh, sorry, not a shop, cart. <laughs> okay, the cart class is the supplier. And then you can see that now the supplier has an array, right? It's exported to any, which means it's public. Now, if I do the following, okay? I will change from array into linked list right away, okay? Now, if I hit compile, let's see what, what's going to happen. If I hit compile, it tells me several things, okay? First of all, it's telling me there's no make empty anymore. So if you go there in the supplier class, so for the supplier, if I change from array into linked list, I have to use uh, just the relevant feature for the linked list. So this is okay to change, okay? So now I'll put a comment over here. Suppliers change for linked list. In that case, I'll say creates orders dot make. Okay, so this one, I'm going to comment it back, okay? Let's see what else, okay? So now, here comes the uh, critical thing. Now, the compilation error is actually on the client side, which is not good. Supplier making any changes should not impact the clients. So now you can see a no identifier upper over here, right? You can see for the shop over here, you got upper, you got lower. So these are array-specific feature that shouldn't be used uh, in the first place, okay? That's the issue that we talked about on Wednesday. See? Let's see what a client should do. Now the client, since their code didn't compile anymore, so they are forced to do the following. They have to say things like, let me just show you one possibility. Clients change for linked list, right? They have to say cart.orders.start. It's a linked list, right? And then until, uh, let me just also put this one for you. So once we illustrate what the issue is, we'll go to iterator pattern. But let's bear with me. And then I would say over here, car orders dot after. So these are linked list specific features. And then over here, I comment this out. And then I can say car orders dot fourth. Okay, so these are the changes that the client is forced to do. Okay, let's see here. Oh, okay. Another thing is, for the shop, you also have to make sure you don't use array specific feature anymore. So now we don't use force. Okay, let me ch uh, change the two. Also, that's a client change. Okay, and now, and I'm pretty sure you know very well how am I supposed to add to the end, extend, right? So I'll say car.orders.extend. And then I would say, uh, oh, okay, to the end. Okay, so now everything is okay, right? So let me summarize what have happened so far. Supplier made a change to the public attribute from array into linked list. The client's code stopped compiling, so they have to do changes. But let's say the, uh, the supplier wants to change back to array again. What's gonna happen? 
supplier has to make changes, and the clients, again, their code wouldn't compile anymore. They gotta make changes again. So if this keep going, the client will be annoyed very soon. So now we want to have a way to really say, whenever the supplier make changes, client's code should remain stable. Right, that's the way to go, okay? Let me now uh, tell you how to do it. What we have to do is do some iterative pattern. Okay, uh, as I mentioned briefly on in the class uh, on Wednesday, okay? Uh, let me just point to you, I'll, I'll, I'll do some hands-on experience with you. But now, just remember the critical classes, okay? Let's look at the supplier side. This is what we care for now, okay? Every time, if you, uh, let's say, just talk about the classes. There is a class called iterable. Every supplier who wants to make themselves iterable by supporting the iterator pattern, they must inherit from this class. We'll do that in just a moment. And then for the iterable class, you have to implement a single uh, query called new cursor, okay? That's why you see there's a new cursor over here, okay? And a new cursor is of type iteration cursor. And the iteration cursor, you have to support item after and forth. And one notice uh, to you. You will see in the design diagram, usually besides the class will feature, you might see plus versus star. Anybody knows what these mean? Star versus plus. They have a special meaning, of course. Anyone? Yes, yeah, star is a defer. Okay, just make sure you want to go over the slides. Okay, star means deferred, unimplemented, unimplemented or abstract. On the other hand, for plus means implemented, or we say effective. It has effect. Okay, make sure you're clear about the star and also plus. Right, you will see that in the diagram quite often. Okay, so now. At the level for iterable and also iteration cursor, the new cursor is simply just abstract, just deferred, okay? So now, one detail to note, and then we'll go to design for our uh, shop uh, example. For every collection uh, in the library, they are automatically iterable. For example, if I just go back to Eiffel Studio, if I just go to the array class, just to show you, you'll see that for the array, uh, I think one of it, this uh, ancestor, is actually iterable. Uh, let me just see which one it is. If I go to indexable, it's, what, uh, it's parents. Pick that and then go there. You would say C table, readable, indexable. There we go. Okay, you see? Array inherits from in, uh, indexable, indexable inherits from readable indexable, readable indexable inherits from iterable. So iterable is really an ancestor for array. That's something I want to show you, okay? That's something you can verify from the base library. So now for array class, basically, iter uh, iterable is one of its ancestors. That's something you want to keep in mind, okay? So now, if for every class over here in the library itself, it's already implemented, plus. So that means the new cursor feature that's deferred, that's inherited to them, must have been implemented. That's, that is why you will see the green arrow over here. For example, here, for array, you can see the new cursor over here with a plus. So that's why we have a plus over here. Okay, just make sure you understand the arrow. And then for every one of them, they also got a special iter uh, iteration cursor class, okay, called indexable iteration cl uh, cursor class, okay? Uh, very quickly, any question about a diagram? Okay. We are going to use this diagram to figure out a solution for two cases. We'll do the easy case first, and we'll do the harder case. What's going to be in your lab test? Most likely the harder case. But you know, let's start with the easy case, just to get an idea. Okay. So now, for the easy case, I will still refer you to the diagram over here, Okay. the same diagram. Let me draw the class into context. Okay. Now. In this case, we have a class called uh, cart. And that class is effective, okay? And now remember, there was an attribute over there called orders, right? Let me go back here. You can see there's an orders class, right? Let's say it's linked list. And so that means there is a client supplier relation over here from 
cart into link list. Okay, I'm just drawing a client supplier relation over here. Okay, it is orders. So far so good? Okay, that's a client supply we have for the cart class. And now, what we want to do is we want to support the iterator pattern for cart. The number one thing you should do is to make sure cart inherits from iterable. As soon as we do that, let me show you now, you wouldn't compile for the reason we're going to see together. Okay? So I will go to uh, the cart class over here, and then I will say inherits. Iterable. And then let me just show you one more detail. If you go to the iterable class in the base library, iterable itself takes one generic parameter g. So that means whatever g you pass over here tells you if an external client want to access the card one element by at a time. What should that be? What should that be? Uh, what that, what should that element be? That should be an order basically, right? Because you can see for the card here, we simply got. And a, uh, a linked list of, of orders, but we simply just want to get one order at a time by the clients. So that should be order. So if I go back here, and then I'll just say iterable of order. So filling in this element here is a critical thing when you implement an iterator pattern. What should that be? Okay. Let me make a note for you. So this means when external clients use cart, they can iterate through it one order at a time. Okay, that's kind of the idea. Okay, whatever you put there should really have this meaning. So now, as soon as I do that, let's see what's going to happen. Let's say compile. Oh, it doesn't compile, right? It says that class has deferred features, but it's not declared as deferred. Let's see what it is. Don't be too terrified by the error message, okay? It'll give you some hints. It tells you new cursor is from iterable, right? Remember the diagram here. If you look at the diagram here, the only feature that's deferred in the iterable class is called new cursor. And now a card inherits from that class, and you have, we have not implemented it. So we have to implement it now. Okay, so now let's do it. And now for the new cursor, let me put a signature there, and then let me ask you how we can implement that. This is only the easy case. So what I will do now is I will go to over here, say feature, iterator, okay? New cursor over here is going to return iteration cursor. And then every element we want to get access to is in order. So I put order here. So now, how do we implement this new cursor? Okay, that's a question, right? To figure out a solution, let me go back to the diagram and give you a hint. Okay? You can actually figure out a solution from the diagram. Okay? Think about this. In this way, uh, from the constraint of the iterable, we want to implement something that's called new cursor that returns an iteration cursor, which means at the runtime, any object whose type is a descendant class of iteration cursor will be acceptable. Right? And now, for the card class, it has a client supplier relation into linked list. Is it possible for us to get a new cursor of type iteration cursor for free without doing anything, according to the diagram? Is it possible? Let me give you a little bit more hints. Iteration cursor is exactly over here, agree? Okay. Is it possible? to simply reuse something that has been implemented already, and then you will just return an iteration cursor. I heard yes. How exactly? Yeah, exactly. So now, to really see in the diagram, this is your friend over here. New cursor, you can see over here, is already implemented for the base library. So now, if you simply go to the orders, the supplier, they, it's guaranteed they support a new cursor already. You can just return it. And that type is simply a descendant class of iteration cursor. That would just be acceptable. Okay? So now, let's go back here and see how we can do it. You will simply say result is now assigned to uh, orders dot 
new cursor, and then everything will just work. Only a one line implementation. Any questions so far before I show you how to use it? We okay so far? Okay. What we have done so far, we have made a card class over here iterable. Okay, that's what we have done. Let's see how we can now do the rest of the job to make the design perfect. First of all, we want to go back to the car class. We want to hide this particular attributes. Okay. What I will do is I'm going to export this to none. That's number one. Okay, we want to, let me put a comment here. Hide this orders attributes because its type might change from time to time. And we do not want such change to impact the clients. Question for you. As soon as I hit compile now, is it going to compile? I heard no. Okay, let's see why. As soon as I do that, I say compile. Okay, you got some error messages over here. Okay, it says feature is not available to the client class, right? It should be quite obvious to you why, because let's see this. You can expand the error messages to see more detail, but I'll tell you right away. If you go back to the shop class, the clients, you can see at the moment, we are basically using orders over here. We are also using uh, orders over here, right? We're using orders all over the place, but it's now hidden. So we should not really try to uh, uh, get access to it. But since we got an iterator pattern, so we should be able to deal with it. Right, let's see how we can fix it, okay? In order to fix it, let me just tell you one thing you should really extend as an exercise, okay? Number one, let me go back to order, uh, go back to the uh, card class again, and I'll show you something here. One exercise for you is, since we cannot get access to the orders anymore, so what we should do is this. Feature another, let's say, extend order. So let's say uh, extend order over here, and then O of type order. So this is exercise for you. So now if the clients, even though they cannot get access to the orders right away, but they can, you can define this public command in order for them to modify the underlying data structure. Okay, that's up to you, okay? And then let me go back to the shop class. If I go back there, first of all, so here, this is not going to work anymore. So here I'm going to say, since orders from card is now hidden, we can only call public command from card to modify the underlying orders. Okay, so let's do that. Card dot, uh, okay, now I can say extend order, right? That's how I call it. Let me just make sure. Extend order, yes, let me just copy that. So now I can say extend order over here, and then, oh, of course you have to uh, uh, implement it to make it work. And let's go to this particular loop, okay? That's where uh, the remaining thing should be done. Now that we support the iterator pattern, we don't have to get direct access to the orders. What we need to do is as follows. I briefly mentioned that in the class, but let's do it together, okay? Let me just comment this out, okay, just for now. So you still get a record for that. Given that the card class is now iterable, we can use the across loop over it. Okay, let's see how. So now I can say across, and then let's say across the uh, card is iterable. And then Let's say each one of them is simply some order. And then loop. Let's see if that might compile. Okay, let's see this. Okay, we got still got uh, more things to handle over here. Okay, so here I'll comment this out and then I'll give it exercise for you. Exercise, define a public query in cart to return the size of card. Okay, I'll give that to you. 
Okay, so now everything just compiled. And I want you to pay special attention to this line specifically. Okay. Now let me just say one more uh, one more thing, and then we'll uh, talk about the hard case briefly. Okay. So now what's happening is this: over here in the uh, in the clients, I have cart. Okay, let me just write it more properly. I have cart of type cart. The reason that I can say across cart directly is some order and loop and then n over here is because this car over here is iterable. That's why it makes work. Okay, one more thing. When you actually look back to the definition for the car class, you say class cart inherits iterable And remember, we put order over here, right? So now let's see where that order can be used. You can see order is exactly over here. That tells you, when you use the across loop, when you say is, is tells you every element in the iterable you're trying to go across is going to be of this type. So that means the order over here, this dummy variable, is of type order. So it really depends on what you put over here. Okay, That's something to note. And if you try the challenging exercise I gave to you on Wednesday, we'll, which we'll go over on Monday. So that also further uh, address this problem here. Okay? Uh, any question about the easy case? Okay? Hopefully everybody's okay. okay. So let me just finish two more lines and then let's go to the hard case briefly. Okay? I cannot uh, hold you too long. Okay? Uh, sorry. So let me go back here and then all you got to do over here is to say, Result is assigned to result plus O dot price multiply O dot quantity. Okay, make sure everything compiled. Okay, now let's talk about the harder case. Okay, the harder case is more interesting in some way. Okay, the harder case goes like this. I'll, I'll type something very quickly for you in just a moment, but now I would like to just go over something here with you. Okay. Let's imagine that we have a class called book. Okay? Put it a little bit like a birthday book. But now we are saying that the record for the book is simply just G. The G may be instantiated by using string, so we have a string book. It could be an account, so we have an account book, right? Etc. And now let's say for information hiding, we simply got exported to none. And we got two attributes over here. We got names and we got records. We got two linear structure. Of course, you could have uh, implemented using a hash table. Let, but let's say we use two linear structure. We got string and also we got G. So at the runtime, for example, this might be the names and this might be the records. Let's say we got an integer book, for example. So now for the string, we, saw we got A and the corresponding position, we got 1. We got B and the corresponding position, we got 2, and etc. Okay, it's simply just a book. Okay? So now let me put this into Eiffel Studio very quickly. And then let's see how we can make this class iterable. Okay, that's the uh, the thing we want to do. Okay. So now let me go back to Eiffel Studio. Let's create a quick uh, new class quickly. So I would say book over here, and then in the book class, I'm going to get uh, two attributes. Okay. So let's say, uh, and then make sure you hide them. So it's going to be none. Okay, we'll say names over here, an array of string. And also we got records, an array of G. And this G is referring to the G of the class over here, right? Everything's good. And now let's define a constructor as well. So create, make. Commands, and then we can say make over here. And let's say initially just an empty book. Question for you. If I hit compile now, is it going to compile? Is it? Seems like everything is fine, right? If I simply say make and without doing anything, is it going to be fine? Okay, let's see. The, way I'm, the reason I'm mentioning this is you don't want to make this mistake in the lab test. If I say compile right away, 
it's a very typical message uh, that you might uh, have. Variable is not properly set. Records and names. What iPhone Studio, uh, what iPhone compiler is complaining right now is, you declare these two variables of reference type. However, you never initialize them to be something that's not void. By default, they will just be void, but that's not acceptable. Everything should be done void by default. Okay. So what we should do now is we should initialize them. Okay. Create names dot uh, make empty, and also create records dot uh, make empty. For example, right. We just got two arrays. Okay. So that's our setup for now. Okay. You can feel free to add the following feature. I'll just put as an exercise for you. Feature uh, exercise. Let's say add uh, record. Now you can say name, also record. Okay, exercise for you. How do you add a pair into the, uh, uh, the stuff, okay? Now the question is, how do we make this particular class iterable? So any clients of the book, they can say across the book. That's what we want to achieve. I would like to go back to the diagram that we discussed, a clean one. Okay? And we, we want to work out a solution, basically, okay? conceptually. Let's see what's happening right now. Basically, we have a class called book. And it should not be abstract, so plus over here. And now, how many client supply relations do we have? In the previous one for cart, we only got one client supplier into array. How many do we have right now? We got two, right? Because if you look at the code over here, we got names and we got records over here, right? So what I, what I will do now is as follows, okay? Let's draw the client supply relation here. One here should be pointing to the array over here, and another one also pointing to the array, the same. But now one should be names, the other one should be records. You could have just drawn one arrow and then say names comma record, that's fine too. I just want to make it more explicit for you, okay? That's fine too. So now we got two client supplier relation to the array, okay? So now, let's say we want to make this class iterable. What we will do is, first of all, we're going to inherit that from iterable, right? And now, as soon as we do that, you, you know what's going to happen. Let's try that first. Another decision we have to make right away is like this. Inherits iterable over here, but it should pass something over here, right? Thinking this way, remember in the previous example over here, when we uh, inherits the uh, uh, card class from iterable. We simply say order. So that when you say across certain card, so this dummy variable is going to be of type order. So now we're going to do a similar design decision. Okay? Let me go a little bit ahead to actually uh, make this, this, make this, uh, this decision. Okay? Let's say we are now having this particular cross loop. Let's say B is of type book. And then the book is going to store maybe dates for birthday, let's say. Okay, and then if I say across B is, let's say, E for entry, for example, right? And then I'm going to do some loop and then end over here. I'm going to do some stuff over here. So now, what do you expect this E uh, is type to be? What should be its type? It's up to your design decision. It may be of type string. If you only want to give uh, back to the client just a string name, one at a time. Or it could be a, of type dates. If you just want to give uh, back to the user just birthday, one at a time. Or you may want to give them back to maybe a pair. So give them a pair of name and also birthday, one at a time. So it's really completely up to your design decision. So let me make it more explicit. Well, we got this particular class called book, right? Book and then G. And now we say inherits from iterable. Whatever type we put over here is going to be this type over here. That's my point, right? Let's make something more interesting. Whenever you return back to the user, if they want to go across your book, maybe you want to return both the name and also the record as a pair. 
OK, so it's a pair, a single value. Okay? So now what I'm going to put is, let me use tuple. Okay? So what I want to have is a tuple. And then the first one should be uh, the name, which is a string. And then the second one should be whatever the uh, record type it is. So I will say G over here, for example, right? So that's what, what I'm going to put here. Let me go back to Eiffel Studio. I would say tuple. And then I would say string and G. Notice that this G will change according to how this G is instantiated. Maybe dates, maybe uh, account, maybe something else. Okay? Let me just uh, put a promise for you. When external clients use an across loop over a book, they get one tuple at a time. Okay? That's something you can keep in mind. Okay, so now we should really implement a new cursor feature. So I'll, I'll do it here. Okay, and then I'm going to say uh, iterator. New cursor. And over here, the return type, you can always put iteration cursor. It's a dynamic type that has to be changed, but I will show you that. So now I can say iteration cursor. Iteration cursor, and then this guy here should be exactly the same as the tu this tuple here. Okay. Once you make that decision, you can use it throughout. Okay. So now everything seems to be fine now. Okay. Except for what should be the value for the result is unset. Okay. I have uh, some question for you. Okay. At least we got two possibilities. Either we can say result is assigned to, right, like how we did it in the easy case. Maybe names dot new cursor, one way, okay? I, I wouldn't compile just yet. Another way, I can say result is assigned to uh, records dot new cursor. Let's say uh, the first one is called number one. And this is number two. Can either one of them work? Would they even compile? Not really, right? Let's think about why. For number one here, names is basically an array of string. So that means the one you return is really an iteration cursor of string, right? So string doesn't match a tuple. It's not enough. On the other hand, records is an array of G. So what it will return is iteration cursor of G. That's also not enough. Conceptually, it will be very nice if we can have something like this, conceptually. Result is assigned to records.new cursor plus one. Conceptually, we can make a tuple out of them. Okay, if we have that conceptually, it's basically like a tuple like this. I'll make it precise so you will see the comments when you download the source code. So this return type over here is a tuple with the first element and also the second element. But it's not quite the same as what's being expected, right? It's not. So none of these uh, options actually work. If you simply try to compile, none of them will actually compile. Okay. Okay, let me just compile first. Right? We still got this particular result un unassigned. Let me go back to the diagram. Any suggestion for this? It's a hard case. The hard, let me characterize what a hard case should be. You will have a hard case when you have so many client suppliers for your underlying data structure. However, you don't really have a direct way to combine a new cursor. That's a problem. What we really want is to return for the new cursor, right? Because it's inheriting from iterable. We want a new cursor for this class over here to return something of type iteration cursor. But there's no direct usage for us because this guy here returns just one iteration cursor. And this one here also returns another iteration cursor. But you cannot combine them right away. That's a problem. 
any suggestion conceptually? Anybody? You can make a, well, you, you mean a new feature or a new class? Maybe that's what you meant. You, you want a new class. So the hard case really tells you if you really want to somehow put these two new curses in a way, you better put them together in a single class to make a class on, your, at your, on your own. Okay? So conception is what we're going to do. Let me make it quick. Okay? So what you will do is you will create another class under iteration cursor. And let's call that my cursor. And then it should be effective, which means every feature that's required by iteration cursor, you must implement the item, the after, and also the fourth. And one final error to draw. So now for the book over here, there will be a client supplier relation like this. So the book will actually going to be a client supplier relation going to my cursor over here. And this should be new cursor. So the final green arrow is really the one you want to get 100% uh, understanding. Okay? So this is what we are trying to do. Okay? We're going to let the book to return a new cursor. And the return type actually is just a new class that we create. So that will be the hard case. Okay? Let me do a little bit of skeleton for you, and then we are done. Okay? I will point to you some further references to uh, get yourself prepared. Okay? Let me go back here. Uh, what we will do is like this. We will go to the model here, and let's create a new class. Right? So let's say my, uh, iter uh, my book cursor. Okay? Create a new cursor yourself. And then we're going to actually say the following. That one there is going to be uh, inheriting from iteration cursor, right? You want to make sure you have that. So inherits iteration cursor. And now this part here should be whenever the clients want to get access to your underlying data structure, what should they get one, one thing at a time? Should be a tuple, right? That's what we uh, agreed. Tuple of string and also, and then here, you want to make sure it's also generic. Okay. And of course, I got to spell it properly. Okay, let's try this. And then as soon as you say that, it tells you class has deferred feature, but it's not declared as deferred. So we got exactly three features that was not uh, that was unimplemented. For example, one of them is the item feature. Okay? So now remember this diagram here. You want to this is the only thing you have to kind of remember. Uh, here you can see we got item uh, under the uh, iteration cursor class. You got item. You got after. You got fourth. Let's declare them right away. And then I'll show you one more thing. Let me go back here. My book cursor. So now feature over here, I would say uh, cursor features. Item is going to be uh, of type tuple, which means every time you call the item, it's going to return back to you a tuple. After is going to be uh, just a uh, boolean. And also, fourth, you're just moving the cursor. I'll talk a little bit more about how these three, uh, three things work, maybe on Monday, when we have more time. Okay. Okay, now I just give you some default implementation. Okay, after over here, just return uh, something. And then you really should get some implementation over here. I guess a constructor. Okay, I can say create, make. Okay, so now I can say for the make, in order for me to create an iteration cursor uh, of this type, in order for me to really initialize an object of this type, I really need both names and also records from the original class, right? So now I'll go back there, and then I'll say make uh, names array of string, and also records array of g. Okay, and over here I can say, uh, and we also can have feature uh, attributes over here. And of course, they should be hidden for information hiding. Array of 
string and also records array of g. So in some way, the iteration cursors share some similarity from the uh, uh, book class. That's normal. Okay? And now we can say names will be assigned to ns, and also records will be assigned to rs. And one more thing here, just to make it compile. I can say item might just be result is assigned to maybe a tuple names at position 1, and also records at position 1 just to make it compile. But I should figure out exactly what I should write here. It's correct implementation. And then, now let's go back to the book. How do we create a new cursor now? So now we, read, uh, we have the my book cursor. So now finally I should just uh, say creates. So now I can pass a dynamic type for the result. So now I can say my uh, book cursor. And then its uh, generic should be generic parameter should be instantiated using uh, this G here. Okay, and then I would say result dot make names and records. I'm doing it a little bit fast because it's also covered by the tutorial videos in detail. I want just want to sketch quickly for you so you know the whole process. Oh, sorry, spelling mistake. Okay, everything compiled, okay? I would say if you got any, uh, I just want to give you the concept about the whole process. You may want to refer to the, to the two, two, uh, two tutorial videos for details about how to implement ex uh, exactly uh, these features. Now that we have done this particular iterated pattern here, so now, what would be the benefits for the clients? Let's just show you one more thing and then we are done. Let me go back to the tests, okay? Test iterators. And then if I go to, let's say, test the book. Okay, so now I have local variable b of type book. Let's say each one of them is simply just integer, make it easy. Okay, or book of order, that's also fine, right? So now what I can do is, you can imagine that, first of all, we're going to create b.make. That'll be an empty book, okay? Uh, let me also put a comments for this particular test, okay? Before we put it across. Okay, so now, exercise for you, add several orders into the book. And of course, make sure it works, okay? Assuming that you have done that. So now we can use the across. So now I can across B directly because that's now iterable. And then is, because we know that each one of them is going to be like a tuple, right? I can say T over here. Let me remind you here. You can see book over here is simply iterable of tuple. And for each tuple, the first element will be a string name. And the second one will be G will be the uh, uh, whatever uh, record it is. In this case, that'll be just integer. So now, how can we uh, process this particular thing? One way to do it uh, is, let's say we want to just print it out, for example. io dot put, for example, string. In that case, I can say t over here is a tuple dot. Actually, for tuple, uh, if you want to get access to it, it's actually quite easy to have the syntax. So if I have a tuple like this, and then I have some type over here and some type over here, that's the first element, that's the second element. I can simply use a square brackets notation to say index 1 or index 2, just like an array. Okay, that's the easiest one for you to use. So now I can say over here, tuple at position 1, and then I O the put integer, okay, and tuple at position, maybe uh, two, okay? That's one way to go, right? If you want to do some testing, you can also say, for example, t1, uh, let me just leave it, leave it like that. You can change the test yourself, okay? Just make sure everything compiles. Non-compatible, t at position one, 
Okay, so that would be book. Oh, I see order. Let me leave this over here because let me put here T2 is of type order. You can print price and also quantity, right? Okay, over here. Okay, let me see why this may not work. Okay, let me see this. Detachable any, okay. Let me just comment this out. This involves something that would might need a little bit cast. Uh, let me uh, leave this line out, okay? But up to now, is everybody okay with the iterative pattern, okay? What you should do is uh, before the uh, before Monday, okay? I'll just put it into comments for here. I'll talk about these two lines maybe on Monday to give you some more details, okay? The following you should do, uh, before Monday, you should really start looking at the tutorial uh, that's on the lecture site. Okay, so now again, you, if you go back to the lectures page, you got these two tutorial on the uh, iterator pattern, right? Study them, they give you more detail about the hard case. And also, you want to understand uh, what we said today about the diagrams over here, about design diagram. Okay? Any question for me before I stop the recording? I thought I would just make half an hour. Sorry for running so much over time. But anyway, I hope, I hope that's worth your time. Yes, question. Yes, for this diagram, I saw there are two cursors. So the cursors on the first one is the upper and the right. Yes, so basically for the hard case, you definitely got uh, one new cursor here that corresponds to the names. You got another new cursor here that corresponds to the records. You got new, uh, two new cursors. But the problem is, you only need just a single new cursor. But how do you return it? You cannot return both, both, uh, both at the same time. So what you should do instead is to create this particular new class over here, which will do some logic to combine them together. So you want to watch the tutorial to see how to. Let, let me handle your question maybe offline, OK? OK, I'll stop the recording now, OK?